following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are entering into the studies of the law of karma. I guess that uh, some of you might uh, hear about this word, or you hear about the word before. This is a Sanskrit word, which means cause and effect. Okay. There is not any effect without uh, its cause, neither any cause without its effect. This cosmic law is one of the three eternal things that we find in the universe. <coughs> In the universe, we find three eternal things, which are, first, the space is eternal. Second, nirvana, which is, uh, this word nirvana means blessed, and uh, is related uh, with that that in Christianity we call heaven. In nirvana, we find all of those uh, creatures which are in uh, perpetual blessed, in ecstasy. And, uh, karma, which is really the cause of everything which is, was, and will be. Related with this, when we inquire about the origin of everything, we find many theories. For instance, in uh, science, we find that the scientists are trying to explain the origin of the universe, but only uh, by the three-dimensional point of view. And they say that the universe is created by a cosmic egg that in the past, in an unknown time or date, exploded. And from that explosion, we find all of the galaxies, solar systems that are expanding in the universe. This is the famous theory of the Big Bang. Of course, uh, we have to state that we disagree with that theory as not a uh, strong uh, foundation in order to give credit to that theory. We know that uh, the universe has an origin, a beginning, a zero hour, but it's not a zero hour for everything in one shot. We have to explain that there is a zero hour in different parts, in different points. Every singular solar system as its own origin, its own zero hour. As well, every human being, every animal, every plant, every planet, etc. And in order to search for the origin of the universe, we have to study the seven dimensions. Seven basic dimensions, because really the universe is not only three-dimensional, but epta-dimensional, which means that it has seven dimensions. And this physical dimension is the lower of all of them. If we want to search for the origin of this particular solar system, we have to search in the past for the causes that originated this particular solar system. And as well, in particular, each planet. And for that, we have to study the law of karma, or the law of cause and effect, which is related, I repeat, not only in the three-dimensional world, but you know the dimensional part of the universe. And for that, we have to study the universe with our consciousness. 
You know that uh, in these times, the scientists are studying the laws of the universe with the intellectual mind, or with that that we call the subjective reasoning, which is related to the five senses, physical senses. So everything that can be, uh, or that the scientists can investigate with the five senses originate the different theories that we find in these times. But if we want to study the law of karma, we have to awake the consciousness. In other words, we have to put in activity all the seven senses, which are related to the seven chakras, or the seven churches of the book of Revelation. That when we put in activity, the consciousness uh, is uh, capable of uh, entering into another dimension and investigating the mysteries of life and death. Not, not only the mysteries of life or death of, of, of our physical body, but beyond this, the origin of death and life of the planets, comets, moons, and, in, and even of that that we call uh, divinity. And then the, our knowledge will be expanded and we will understand what the law of karma is. Even though uh, we can give an explanation for our intellectual mind, but it is necessary for us to be attentive in order to understand this law, because it's not only related to the three-dimensional world, to the physical world. In order to understand this law, we have to understand what the consciousness is, what the spirit is. When we look, for instance, for the origin of matter, or as we say in another lecture, Einstein, the great uh, physicist, he said that mass transforms itself into energy, and energy into mass. So, in this that mass or matter that we find in the universe, we find that eventually will be converted into energy. But that same energy will become matter or mass in the future. So really there is not an end for the matter, neither for the energy. It's a constant transformation. Behind the phenomena, we find noumenon. The noumenon is the intelligence that originates all of these transformations. Transformations that are happening in the simple atom, like in the complicated solar system. And we have to understand that this noumenon, or intelligence, that, that in religion we call God, is really not individual, but multiple. Different religions study this noumenon, or intelligence, and they uh, gave to this different names, which of course related with our own particular self-realization or developing, spiritual development, we need to study. But when we uh, teach about this origin of the universe, or the origin of things, or the beginning of things, we have to give a, a specific name coming from the Sanskrit. And that name is precisely Pohat. To specify what Pohat is, in simple words, we will say that it's fire. But not the physical fire. We will say that it's the fire of the fire. That fire that eventually transforms energy into matter and matter into energy. If you study, for instance, the symbol of the water, you find that it is formed by two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. But the intelligence that unites the two atoms of hydrogen with one of oxygen is for hot. This Fohat is the activity of that intelligence that in Christianity they call it Holy Spirit. In the East, in India, they call it Shiva, the Lord Shiva. In Kabbalah, they call it Bina, which means intelligence. So this intelligence, Holy Spirit or fire, is not a person, but it's that entity that is in the depth of everything. If you look, for instance, the intelligence, uh, for the intelligence that united the sperm with the ovum within the womb of our mother, you will find that that intelligence was a fohat, the Holy Spirit, intelligence that has no form, but is the origin of forms, and is beyond matter and energy. Certainly, through the meditation, the technique of meditation is how we can experience because there is a way to experience what Pohat is. Right now, as I said, intellectually speaking, we have to utilize our imagination in order to understand. But what is the best 
is to enter into meditation concentrated in for heart, that fire, in order to understand in the consciousness what fire is, flame. That for heart is precisely that burning bush that Moses found in the Mount of Sinai, the same fire that the Zoroastrians worship with the name of Haura Mazda, the same fire that in Greek we call it Christ. And in Latin, it's called Lucifer, which is a very scary name for the fanatical people of Christianity. When they hear the name Lucifer, they just are chill. They know that Lucifer is a Latin word which means light and fire. It is not, not related with any particular evil spirit as they think. It's just a name for the same fire that we're talking here. That is always in the center of every living thing. That fire is always acting, working in accordance to certain causes, in accordance to the law of karma. It's not a fire that will come to violate the law. It's that fire that, as in Christianity we say, is accomplishing always with the will of God or the will of the Father. Who is this Father? Is just we will say a name that we give to that force which is not a person but it's a force from which this fire comes from you will say that it is a common eternal cosmic father then we will understand that eternal cosmic common father is everywhere inside of each one of us and that fire from which the law of karma is acting through is also inside of each one of us. Christ for heart, the origin of this planet Earth, for instance, is the for heart, that fire. That's why it's written, talking about that fire in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything was made by Him. And without Him, anything that was made was made. Because He, or It, is really the origin of life. The Word, the fire, the sound. If you sharpen your ears, when you are close to the physical fire, you will listen that it is making a sound like an essence. That is what in Greek is called the Logos, the verb, Christ, for hot fire, has no form, but it's sound, light, fire. And it's always there, it's the Logos, that has the power to organize atoms, molecules, cells, in order to create a human being, an animal, a plant, a planet, a comet, sun, star, a solar system. This is what we call the multiple perfect unity. It's always there in order to create the universe. And when the universe is created, this Fohat is always crucified in the center of any matter. Crucified because this fire will originate life and will sustain that particular life until that matter will become energy again. If you, for instance, looked for the foundation of this life that we have in this planet Earth, you will go to the depth and you will find that Fohat, which constantly is originating life, sustaining the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, human kingdom, through the transformation of the matter. For instance, what is that intelligence that digests your food, the food that you eat? Because we don't need to have any effort or to do any effort in order to digest our food. We just eat and the food goes into the stomach. And certain intelligence will dissolve that food and will become vitamins and different minerals for our body. 
What is that intelligence that when we breathe is putting the oxygen in our lungs and we sustain our life by breathing and that oxygen is purifying our blood that will nourish all of the cells, molecules and atoms in our physical body. If you observe uh, carefully your internal body, physical body, you will see that there is a lot of intelligence there and you don't need to do any effort. And even to breathe, and even to digest. Other functions are already active. It's intelligence. And of course, that intelligence is that for heart. That enters, that is there in our organism, that we ignore, that is there. But that fire, of course, is divided into many fires or into other intelligences that are acting into the body is what in Christianity you find that is stated that the Holy Spirit resides in our body and the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit but this fire always acts according to the law it's an intelligence that always is applying the law cosmic law that law that we are talking here that is the law of karma. When a particular planet or solar system is being created by that intelligence, from the bosom of the eternal cosmic common father always emanate millions of sparks that are coming into this universe in order to learn, in order to acquire knowledge, or in order to acquire intelligence. Those sparks that emerge from that bonfire which is the father, is that that in theosophy we call it monad. Monad means unity. That particular unity is our own spirit, our own particular being. So there are many sparks, beings, monads, or spirits in the universe as many beings, of many creatures. Because not only the human beings have monad or spirit, also the animals, plants, minerals, planets, suns, moons. And of course, those monads are part of the sparks of the same fire. But evolving or developing in different degrees. You cannot say, for instance, that it is the same, the monad or the spark that vivifies this planet Earth, like the monad that vivifies a particular or insignificant ant. A particular monad, for instance, is more intelligent than the monad that uh, vivifies a simple fly. There are many degrees among the four hats. In the universe, of course, a four hat is always acquiring more flames, more fire, in order to shine strong and the strong, the strongest and the strongest. That is, of course, we will say the goal. So when this sparks return into the bonfire, the bonfire will shine more. But in order to acquire that, they need to learn, they need to awake intelligence in this universe. Therefore, the law of karma is a law of the scale that is helping those sparks to balance that that they want to acquire. If they are lacking from certain intelligence in order to understand certain laws, the law of the scale, which is karma, will do that in the universe for them. This is how those monads or spirits are acquiring, of course, what they deserve or are getting what they deserve in the universe. They have talked, for instance, the origin of this planet Earth. This planet Earth is the origin of karma. Planet Earth was born within the chaos. The chaos is not in the physical plane, but within the causal plane. The causal plane is beyond the mental plane. So within the causal plane, within the sixth dimension, this forehead originated the planet Earth. With time, ages, the planet Earth became into the mental plane, fifth dimension. 
And then, with time and ages, descended into the astral plane, also in the fifth dimension. And then, time and ages descended into the etherical plane, fourth dimension. And finally, it appeared in the physical plane, third dimension. So this physical plane, we will say, is the very bottom of this planet Earth and its distinction, or we will say evolution coming from above to below. That is the origin of planets. But this planet Earth was created for karma. Before the matter being united or organized in order for this planet to be what it is, the causes of the origin of this world were created or were developed in a very ancient cosmic day. Cosmic day is a time in which a planet is developing, a planet, solar system as well, but we are talking here about just planet. So when a cosmic day finishes, and then the planet becomes a moon, disintegrates and becomes dust, eventually. For instance, right now, individually speaking, every single human being is originating a particular cause, or we will say an effect, that it will be a cause in the future. So when this planet with the time will become a moon and will disappear, the effect of all the actions of all the creatures of this planet will originate another one. And that particular planet that will be in the future will be the effect of all the activities, all the causes that we are performing in this very moment, and that we perform in the past, and that we will perform in the future on the surface of this planet. That's why in occultism, and satirism, we say that the origin of this planet is the moon. When you see in the night the moon shining there in the sky, you know that it's a dead planet. There's no life. But that moon had life in the past cosmic day. Where is the life then of that moon? It's here in the planet Earth. We will say that the life of the moon reincarnated in a new body, and this body is the planet Earth. So before this planet was created, when this planet was not existing, it was just something in the imagination of somebody. The life of this planet was in the moon. And that dead corpse that we see in the night was plenty of life. And then, seven humanities were developed there. And all of the Fohats, or Monads, that were acting in that moon earth, were of course evolving and trying to reach certain levels of intelligence. But they performed a lot of wrong deeds. They committed a lot of mistakes. Those mistakes originated karma, and now the origin of this planet is those mistakes. That's why uh, when we search for the origin of this planet and why we are living in this way that we are living now, we find the answer in the law of karma. This planet is a mistake of different monads, or in other words, it's a mistake of the gods in order for them to understand, because a fohat, or a monad, spirit, is a god. The mistake of different monads or spirits in the past originated in this planet. It is the karma of the world. And really, the particular activities or the particular behavior of this planet Earth is very old, related with other planets of our solar system and of our galaxy. Other societies are different. Tarian societies. But this particular planet Earth is very polluted, degenerated. Why? Karma. 
is obvious that all of the inhabitants of this planet will understand this law and will fight in order to change the law in our favor, the whole planet will become different. That people, instead of changing for good, are changing for bad. We are not only destroying our lives, but we are destroying other lives. And even the life of the planet, everything is polluted because of our ignorance. And we fight always the great cosmic law sent to this planet many great messengers in the past in order to help us. Because we have to understand that this law of karma is not a drastical law like many people think that you cannot negotiate this law, or there is not mercy. There is mercy in the universe, and there are always great beings trying to help us. But unfortunately, we always pay these beings with uh, black coin. Many beings were sent into this planet Earth in order to help. And remember that when we say this, let us understand that we are not uh, talking about the theories of certain groups in the planet Earth that say that Moses came in a cosmic ship, that Jesus came in a cosmic ship as well, and that they were receiving doctrine for cosmic ships, and that they were using these or that cosmic ships in order to do the miracles. No, we are not talking about that. We don't deny that uh, other societies or communities in the universe have cosmic ships. But when we say that other people or, or beings of other planets came into this planet in order to help, we are saying that they came through the law of reincarnation. Because if a being wants to help, sends the human soul, and the human soul takes a physical body in the womb of any woman, and will become the son or the daughter of people of this planet. And eventually this person will become a personality that will help the inhabitants of the planet Earth. Eventually they will discover that. There are, of course, exceptions of people that came from other planets in order to help this planet. Like the case of this great being, which his name is Sanat Kumara. He came 18 million years ago to this planet Earth and still is here helping humanity. He came from the planet Venus in order to help the karma of this planet. Since the vibration of this particular planet Earth affects the psychology of the, of the psyche of people of Mars and Venus, which are very close to us. And they are always trying to help the karma of this planet. So here we find that the different mistakes of the spirits or monads ancient times originated this particular planet Earth in which we live right now. And we have our being in. So that is the cause of this planet. And of course, always, in the down of every creation, there is, all, uh, there is always new spirits that appear in order to evolve. And the evolution, or devolution, is always under the law of karma, cause and effect. Our particular monad, our particular spirit, our particular being, our particular God has to create the man or the human being in order to accomplish with the goal. Because this universe, the, the goal of this universe is precisely the creation of man. In between quotations, when we always say man, we are not pointing the male, but the human being. Because man is that Sanskrit word manas, which means mind. And when someone acquires human mind, it's called manu, someone that is a real human being. So the monad of the spirit has to create a human being. When the monarch creates a human being, a real man, and then it's a conflict of, uh, with his goal. But when we investigate all of the monads of this planet Earth, we discover that 
they didn't create the man yet. They have to create the man, the human being. But the problem is that it exists on the surface of this planet Earth many schools, philosophies that are trying to explain the origin of the universe and uh, departing from the point of view that we are already man or human beings and that's the great mistake because religion and science think that man or human being is only the physical body, the shape that we have. They know that in order to achieve or to reach the level of human being, we need to create internally other human bodies. In the same way that we have a human physical body, we have to have a human emotional body, a human mental body, a human causal body. People living ignore about these bodies. Bodies that surface in order to travel in other dimensions. It is due to the strong karma that is, of course, related with each one of us. When we commit a mistake, immediately the law of scale or the law of karma is going to balance our consciousness. And the equilibrium of that law when it is, of course, a key grade in the consciousness and different levels originates different type of problems between matter and energy. There is always good karma and bad karma. The bad karma is called karma, but the good one is called dharma, with the dharma. In your past life, for instance, if you were having a nice body, and uh, you were having a good profession, and you were rich, and you were, of course, having a nice uh, house, etc., with plenty of money, but you were always wasting your food, because you were have always plenty of food, you were eating a lot, and you were always having leftovers, and you were throwing that in the garbage. But you were throwing in the garbage good food, but you didn't care, but you didn't think. That that food that you were throwing in the garbage was good for somebody that was in the streets starving. There are a lot of people like that that always do that. So now, you die. So that person died in a past life. And now, he's fighting and trying to get money, trying to get wealth to eat. And it's always miserable. Loving in, in, in poverty. And uh, works, have a little bit of money, and is always trying to get in, is always fighting for it. Why? Because in his past life, he was having plenty, and he didn't know how to utilize it. This is how the law of karma teaches you. Most of the beggars were rich people in past lives. People that were, of course, wasting food are now starving. So this is the necessity to teach this law. Because there are people that they think, they say, well, I don't believe in the law of reincarnation, neither in the law of karma, therefore I don't care. But that's not a matter of believing. Whether you believe it or not, you will return. Because this is a law. It's like somebody says, I don't believe that the water will wet my body if I walk under the rain. Okay, go ahead, walk under the rain, you will be wet anyhow, believe it or not. So cosmic laws are cosmic laws, and are laws to believe, or to reject. They are laws to study. But there are people that are related to this particular religion that teaches, do not study that because it is a sin. Therefore they are always in ignorance. They come again and they are applied. The law of karma is a law that is applied whether you know it or not. If you do good deeds, you will have always your payment. There's a friend in New York. I owe him a certain quantity of money. And I talk with him because he always sends me books, plastic books. So I forget to send you the last payment. But you know anyhow that 
sooner or later I have to pay you. Yeah, he says, that's why I don't worry. If you don't pay me in this life, you will pay me anyhow. Because it's a law. Even if you don't want to pay me, I don't care, but you will pay me. Because it's a law. People think that, I mean, you, you take money from somebody and say, oh, he forgot or she forgot. So I don't care, I won't mention anymore. So I won't pay. You will pay. Maybe not in this life, but next life. There is always a way. Because it's a law. It's like, for instance, you have a hammer in your hand and you hammer your finger. It's a law. You will be blooded, right? I mean, be a uh, little we are bleeding. It's a lot. You are hurting your finger. Instead of studying it and comprehending the lie inside of us, we just protest. Many people we hear that say, well, but I that was always a good person since I was born, doing always good to everybody. Meanwhile, see how God is treating me. Why everybody is against me. Why am I left is miserable? Well, sit down, meditate, and search for the origin of that in your past life. You will discover. For instance, people that are involved in gossip, criticism, everybody are criticizing them. Everybody are punking them unjustly. And they suffer. Why are these people are treating me like this? and telling me all of this, meanwhile, I didn't tell them anything. I am treating them good. I'm doing good. Well, look in your past life. You were doing the same, same thing against them in the past life. And now they are treating them the same way to you. The thing is that, because everybody has slipped, consciously speaking, they do not know anything about their past lives because they don't have the sense in order to discover that. So they act mechanically. That's the point. Mechanically, sometimes we act against some person. And we say, why I am like this again? Every time that I see this person, I am mean towards him. And I don't want to be, but really, it comes automatically. Well, it's some, something in the psyche that is applying karma to this person. Or this person applying the karma to us. And if we don't break that mechanical activity, we will return again and we will receive the same treatment or we will give the same treatment. It's because we do not know how to balance ourselves until we awake the consciousness. The only way to break the pattern is by remembering the cause of that particular incident. It's the only way. It's not possible. There are many people that say, for instance, or such and such master that will come and will do a certain ritual and will help the karma of everybody. It's impossible. You know that Christ, that Fohat, can help you. He says that Christ forgives the sins of the world, or the karma of the world. Yes. But if you comprehend that karma in you, if you analyze it and you make light in the darkness, if you don't make light in the darkness, your karma will always be mechanical in your present life and coming, coming back. So the law of karma is that law that is always acting in this present life and is related with the law of return and reincarnation. That's why those laws exist. They don't to balance. That's why you see that many people are being born blind because they were cruel in past lives. Cruelty originates blindness. Materialism originates tuberculosis. Fornication, adultery, originates cancer, and many other sicknesses which are appearing. Effect of sexual degeneration in this life and past life. People are with cancer right now, which is the effect of sexual degeneration in past life. But meanwhile, instead of behaving or regenerating themselves, they are degenerating more and degenerating more and more. So the result is that the effect is stronger and stronger. Really the origin of cancer is that that we call L-U-S-T, lust. That everybody have 
You see, for instance, people that were envious in past lives, now they are being born with that sickness that has what you call pigmentation, different spots, white spots in the original death. Of course, you have to understand that it's a type of envy that somehow was causing that we're doing something bad to others. People that were uh, mocking other people, for instance. Or a person that was lying a lot and his lies were causing troubles to others and even death to others. That person is being born in the present life with a very deformed physical body because he was deforming the truth. Deformity is the effect of life. So the law of karma, of course, I repeat, not only originates bad but also good. There are certain people that are doing evil. Meanwhile, they are having a lot. They are having abundance because they are receiving what they uh, have to see for the absence of past lives. And in the present life they are doing evil. Everybody will think, well, injustice. Because this person is doing evil and meanwhile he ha has abundance. Well, the coming life you will see the result of that. So if you want to study the origin of your present life, of course, it's your past life. In the actions of your present life will be the effect or the cause, in other words, for your future. We can call it reincarnation, but really return. This is how the law of karma always acts, not only in the human beings, but in the world. As I said, this planet Earth is the origin of the causes of past cosmic days. But those causes have to be studied not only physically, but psychologically. Because if we look for the causes of our present activities, you will see that it is coming from inside. The physical body is only a vehicle that nature gives us in order to utilize it for good or for bad. The ego that we have within is the one that takes the physical body to this place or take it to the other place. For instance, you have within your soul, within your consciousness, the eagerness of knowing about the mysteries of life in the universe. So you come here and you learn, but because you want. So that will originate, of course, in you a cause that will have in, in, in time and effect. If you practice the different practices and tools that we give here, the effect, of course, will be something good for you. The developing of inner senses and knowing other things that people ignore. But other people that they just care less about this, instead of coming here, where they go to the bars, meet other people, drink beer, liquor, they get drunk, and then later on they go to apartments or, or homes, gather other people, they smoke marijuana, take cocaine, etc. That is a cause of something that will be the effect in the future. In this present life, only coming life. You see in the news, for instance, a lot of children being born from drug addicts, that they need a drug when they are just newborn. Justice, you would say, right? But the soul which is in this child is by karma in that body. And the parents will have a child for karma as well. You see how karma is, of course, applying of balancing the karma with the soul of the child and the soul of the parents. It's obvious that if we change our behavior, our psyche, by law of affinity, we will bring a different type of soul if we are going to be parents. Because it is a law of affinity that you bring into your or the magnetism, that you bring into your life according to your level, the level of your being.
So there is a lot of cause of uh, uh, ignorance in this planet, and it's due to karma. Unfortunately, this is the karma of our planet Earth. Right? Every, every, uh, most of the people in this planet Earth are, uh, how do you call, narrow-minded people. And uh, there are still people in this planet Earth that believe that only the planet Earth can uh, behind life. Maybe, right? Because they are afraid of uh, using their beads, right? In particular, beads that they know about the, the esoteric meaning of them. But, as I repeat, karma is a law that is acting individually, and here, for instance, we are together. It's obvious that if we start working and working together and being each other together, we are going to originate a particular karma for this group. Since we are teaching good things and we are performing good things in order to increase our good uh, energies, the karma will be dharma, good things for us, things for this group. Of course, uh, uh, other people that gather together in order to plan how to put a bomb and to destroy an airplane, etc. They're evil minds that are putting their karma together that will originate evil things and that will originate effects for them in the future. And they would never succeed unless those people needed that bomb lockdown? No, it's not that these people need to, uh, to, to die like that. The thing is that this planet is a, a lot of evil. Right, people that die in, in those uh, explosions of terrorism, they don't need to die like that. But they die like that because they are evil minds that are planning that. Because they don't want to change, and they think that they need to change this planet through violence is the way. And there are a lot of people that think like that. Only violence, they think, is the way. Meanwhile, there was always violence in this planet for long years ago, a long time ago. And it's always the same thing, it's worse. Do victims of terrorism actually have victims? They're not like they want to mention that. No, as we say, it's, they are victims. And karma, you said karma is always balancing, right? Yeah, but you are, uh, sometimes you originate new karma. So then a baby born to an addict might be an addict too? No, in that case it's karma. So you're saying but when you plan to kill 40 or 100 people in an airplane, that is not karma. That is your evil deed doing that. It's not karma. It's going to be karma for you because you are originating a new effect, a new cause. And that, of course, is terrible because those people that kill in that way, they really gave a lot of karma, very heavy one. And when somebody is a victim or something like that, do they get some of their dharma to make up Yeah, theory? yeah. People that die uh, unjustly, they immediately are reborn in a, a better situation because ever, of that action. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about help except from our own uh, connection to our own divine within. Do you believe that there are, and, and the avatars are where they can come back in higher consciousness, but do you believe that we have some kind of help on other planes that is not directly from our father connection within or? Of course there are a lot of help on other planes, but in order to receive that help, we need to work inside. So to wake up and be alert even to that exactly. kind of Exactly. It's not that uh, you are going to receive that help just because you believe in something. You have to work for that. In my case, for instance, I give faith. I am receiving help for certain beings internally, but not because uh, they like me. No, it's because I worked a lot in order to gain that. You can also receive the same help if you work in yourself, psychologically speaking, if you change. Because there are a lot of people that are full of theories. They like to talk about these things, karma, astral projection, reincarnation, but they don't do anything, individually speaking. They just live like any other one. You have to meditate 
you have to change psychologically. What do you do, for instance, in order to annihilate your anger? Are you annihilating your anger? What are you doing in order to change? Or are you happy with your anger? Are you uh, or like other people that think that to be angry is good? Mm-hmm. Are there people that said, oh, lust is okay. God says, grow and multiply. A lot of people that, are, uh, that agree with the generation. Of course, those people won't change. Won't change, yeah, but for bad. But if you really think that we should, we should change for good, not just think, do it. That's why many techniques exist. Zen meditation, many ways in order to understand yourself, to change psychologically, and to acquire another higher level. And then you will have a different life. And of course, to stop being selfish is another step. If you are changing, you have to show others how to change as well. Because you are just one cell of the whole organism. There are many sick cells there that are like a cancer for this planet Earth, which are just destroying life, human life, animal life, plant life, mineral life. So if you are conscious of that, and you, work, you change in yourself, and you behave in a different way, help others, teach them. The beginning is to change our thoughts, of course. That is the beginning. To know. Because if you don't know how to change yourself, how are you going to do it? First, to understand. One of the steps is, for instance, the law of karma. Exists. Cause and effect. Every single act will be the cause of a future effect related with my life and with the life that are around me. So let be that act good for everybody, right? But if we, for instance, we smoke marijuana, we buy others to smoke marijuana in our home. You know, there are others that say, oh, like these people like to smoke marijuana, let's bring cocaine as well. And after that, let's make an orgy. Well, that will originate a terrible karma for you, for all the people that are doing that. And if they do, and all the houses us, in this very moment, is very common, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, everybody's doing that. So they will originate a karma for that particular city. Like in the United States, all the cities of the United States, they smoke marijuana and use cocaine. Right, more, uh, other, some cities more than others. So the whole karma of the United States is terrible. And there is a lack of sicknesses and problems related with marijuana and cocaine. And you find that drug in the streets, everywhere. Why are they doing it in order to change it? Well, I was watching this program on TV uh, a few days ago about the police in New York that they were involved in that. The police in New York, they were selling that. But if the police is doing that, with respect. What is a, a great uh, deluge that is right now? Save your life. We, certainly we are doing here an effort. We are trying to say at this, uh, this phrase, to save at least the heart of the castaway. <laughs> because we are already castaways, you know, in this great degeneration, the illusion of degeneration that we are in this planet Earth. We have to defeat karma. We cannot defeat it in the planet because the karma that the planet has is very heavy. At least individually, to go out of the big tide, you know, that is sinking of everybody inside. To go out swim in another direction. This is what we have to do. But believe me, it is not easy because the strength of the current of that tide that is sinking everybody down is very strong. To swim against that is to fight against yourself. 
because all the causes that are originating the destruction of this humanity are within each one of us. Within each one of us. We don't have to point anybody. Just point you. As somebody told me one day, when you point somebody, there are three against you. <laughs> With your finger, right? And really because the causes of karma are in your brain, in your heart, and in your sex. Those are the three centers that you have to study. Thoughts, feelings, and actions. If you are angry in your heart, you can even kill somebody. That eliminates uh, terrible karma. Sometimes in the court, you can lie in order to defend the life of somebody or in order to defend your life. But your cousin, there are a special karma for you when you lie. So we have always to watch our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Karma, I repeat, is a law that is related to the spirit, to the psyche, to the mind, to the body. You see, for instance, in, in Europe, Yugoslavia is in war. Why? Well, people in that country originate that war, their own karma. Meanwhile, in Israel, they are still with problems. Their own karma. So some people can be there accidentally and other people deserve to be there? Well, the people that deserve to be there are there. But some people people that do not have anything to do with that karma are not there. I think you said some accidents can happen. I'm still not on the Yeah, a lot of accidents happen. But if you are smart, you have to know how to drive, knowing not to have an accident. There are victims too, yeah. but it, but it's a lot of accidents, so you have to be out of there, okay. or to behave in other ways. So there's never victims. Though. I mean, there's never any victims. There's only one. You know, all of them. Those that are innocent, they return because always accidents. Those that do not deserve to receive the punishment of this particular country, they are reborn again in good karma. Earthquakes, you see that the earthquakes always are acting in different places. It is amazing how the law of earthquakes, or the law of karma, for instance, like, you know that the lines of country, uh, uh, that divide the countries, are just imaginary lines. But when the earthquake acts, it's like seeing that imaginary line. Destroy this particular city in two miles. When you find the other city, it's just intact. The law of karma exists. And if we awake the consciousness, we can change this law consciously. If we don't awake, and then we are submitted to the law of accidents, we will be always asleep, ignoring many things. And things will happen by karma or by accident. And most of the times, happen by accident. It comes into my memory a uh, uh, story of the master. He sent his watch to be fixed in a certain place close to a market, public market in the center of the city of Mexico. So one day he went to the store in order to ask for his watch. And he went with his wife. Being in the store, he heard an explosion that happened in the market. By accident, somebody left a uh, certain dynamite. Uh, you see, it is a stupid mine, right? And exploded and killed a lot of people by accident. And then he, uh, when well, you he, he were hearing the smoke, the flames, and everybody crying, right? Because it was very close to that store. And then uh, they, uh, they hear the, the siren of the firemen going, of course, in order to help him. And then his wife told him, let's get out of here. I cannot tolerate it. It's too much and pain, blood, fire everywhere. It's I, I cannot do it. But let's go home. And then the master was just quiet and says, no, I won't move. If I move, I will die by accident as well. 
Why? She said. Because a second explosion is coming. And there is no time even to warn anybody. Those firemen that are going to the market in order to help victims are going to die as well. And then they said that she was just staring at him and saying it a few seconds after the second explosion that was stronger than the first one. They found, they said, right, in the newspapers later on, only a foot of one of the firemen, only one foot. And they were disintegrated, of course. So you see here how an awakened person and a boy, if he's an awakening, see the future, things which will happen. But we are not capable to see that because we are asleep, so we have to awake. When we have hunches, it's because a part of us is awake or are we being helped to be awake? And the full hunch is the voice of the spirit. The if we spirit. learn how to listen to those hunches of that voice, we will always be good out of many troubles. So the thing is that when you feel the hunch in your heart, it means you think, oh, maybe it's just a failure. I don't think so. <laughs> and then you go and then many times you will say that type of things. Like when you are driving for instance, you're feeling you have a hunch, reduce the speed. Because maybe an accident. And, and the name you reduce the speed, they say, well, there's nobody here. And later on you see oh, an accident. And you were coming so far when you will be also there. I remember, for instance, one day when I was driving my car and I felt the necessity to reduce the speed. But the time for my lecture was almost coming. And I was going to, to, to go to home, shower, and go to and give a lecture. So I said, reduce the speed. I felt, right? No, I had to go. And when I was going there, a man was, of course, crossing the road, very slow. And then I thought, well, since he is looking at me, that I'm coming fast, he's going to speed. No, he just was very fast. It was a man like 70 or 80 year, years old. And immediately I said, there's no way, if I don't break my car, I'm going to hit it. If I break it, I'm going to know what right. So immediately, I just did something that was not myself doing it. I moved the car in a certain way that I just was amazing after that. Right? <laughs> I was facing after that the opposite. You see? And the man was in the gas station and I was just like that, you know, seated in my car. What I did, what, what did I do, right? How do I move the, the steer? I don't, I don't remember. But I just moved in a certain way that my car was just dancing a little bit, speeding, and facing after that the opposite way. And then I said, well, it is because I am too smart. No, God help me here. He was giving me the warning, so I was not listening. But he said, well, this is stupid. It needs to be uh, still alive in order to help him. <laughs> <laughs> Let him be, right? <laughs> so you see, you see the difference. And after that, I said, no way. I had to drive slowly, right? And they came late to the lecture, but I was still alive. I said, that's a good lesson. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.
Yeah, Lord.